you know, in my work with the poor, with the homeless, um, with the disenfranchised, the precariously housed, with the hungry, um, that community that I work with grew into an organization. And then over time, as I became the director of that organization, I found myself driving around, meeting with people with means, with money, uh, with power, to raise money for the work that we were doing. And I remember being frustrated by this, uh, kind of questioning God, you know, you called me to work with the poor and I spend all my time at lunch with the rich, having coffee with the rich. And God very clearly, I feel like spoke to me then and said, don't forget that you are working with the poor, that these individuals in another way are poor. And in some sense, I, that, that, that lesson has always stuck with me. We, we are all poor in some way. We, are, we all lack freedom. We are all captive to our possessions, to our addictions, to our entitlement, uh, to our circumstances. Um, we are captive by a lack of access or ownership, and there's so many ways in which we are in captivity. And that really at the root, poverty is actually relational. And I think this is something we can see really clearly in the fall. So man is made to be free, creative, and then he chooses, he eats off this tree of good and evil, and man falls. And what we see then is he has a marred identity. He, he, I'm naked and ashamed and I hide. God is calling, where are you? And I, I would argue God is still calling to you. Where are you? And he says, I was naked and ashamed. And, and then his relationship with the earth is broken in the curse. His relationship with other individuals, our relationships with one another are broken in the fall. Our relationship with God is broken in the fall. And our relationship with ourself is broken in the fall. And the work that God is seeking to do among us fallen people is to restore our sense of identity as created, loved individuals made by Him, to be in right relationship with each other, to be one with Him and one another, and to be stewards and lovers and one with our earth, this creation that He gave us to steward. And, and, and that vision really is a vision of what we would call the coming kingdom where we are in restored relationship. And, and the, the, the vision that there is no tear is really one of, I would argue that there is no tyranny, that there is no poverty, that there is no, um, this is the vision that we aim for, that we would be restored in right relationship. And so, like I said earlier, when I came and began working with those that lived in the alleys and lived on the streets, and I, I found the presence of God there, as by the way, he said we would find in Matthew 25, and I was healed and taught and led by their presence, that I realized that I was poor and I found riches there, ingenuity and creativity and perspective and wisdom. And there was so much that I became jealous really of the life and perspective of some of the poor, most materially poor people that I've ever lived among or, or, or known. And yet I also had a sandwich to share or a jacket to share. And, and there became reciprocal relationships, healing relationships that heal one another. Um, and so, and by the way, this is why we named the well, the well, it's after the story of the woman at the well, Jesus comes to the well and this woman comes to the well. Um, and he asks her for a drink of water. And it always stuck with me that he was thirsty. And it was my experience when I came to the poor, they quenched something deep in me and, and we both come thirsty to this watering hole. And we both leave fulfilled, healed, and made whole. Um, and this is what we pray happens among the work that we do, the tables that we set where we want to call materially rich, materially poor, isolated and well in community, the employed and the unemployed. We want to call them to one table to heal one another, to see the image of God in one another. Um, and really, this is the sleight of hand behind all of our work. And... Uh, we want to invite you to the table, invite you to sit among the poor 
and to recognize the poverty in yourself and in all of those in your life and that we realize that God became poor in Jesus, not so that we would not be poor, but so that all of us, the poor, all of the poor would be made holy and to be made one.